Siri, do you like The Witcher 3? I really have no opinion. Guess that about sums it up. So The Witcher 3 is CD Projekt's red third installment in their popular RPG franchise. Can it live up to the hype and expectations of the previous two games? So the story of The Witcher 3 takes place a few years after the events of The Witcher 2, where you once again play as the professional monster hunter, Geralt of Rivia. Everything seems to be going fine, and you're doing your average day monster killing sort of thing, till all of a sudden you find out that Siri, and no, not Siri from the iPhone, Eventually you find out she goes missing and Geralt really needs to find her because not only is she really close to him, as often several times throughout the game, Geralt refers to her as someone that's as close as my daughter, but she's also very important to the entire world because she contains Elder Blight, which allows her to travel between different worlds, and so the Wild Hunt is actually going after her because they want to use her power to take over the world in pretty much every other dimension. So it's up to Geralt to find Ciri and rescue her and basically take out the Wild Hunt. Along the way you meet several companions who will help you throughout this quest of yours, and along the way of trying to find Ciri, you also try to help out other people along the way as usual. Basically the type of quest you would expect in an RPG type game where a person says they need a certain item or a certain person to convince for them to talk to, for you to run one place to the other to kill some stuff or collect some things. You played it before, I mean, they are really well done, but essentially if you play any RPG games like this, you usually know how it goes. They're well done, but just expect to feel like you're having some deja vu. The story, while well written and very interesting, didn't really feel like much was at stake because most of the game you are doing mainly quests for just random people throughout the world, so you never really do feel like you're doing one main thing at a time, it feels like you're doing several things at a time. So the story didn't really grab me as much as the last games did, even though this one is still good this time around, it just really didn't have that effect on me like the previous games did. The voice acting this time around is excellent. I felt that every single character really tried their best. They really wanted to best their character, and I feel like all of them were really into it, and you can really tell. And there is so much dialogue in this game, it almost puts Bioware's games to shame. Not kidding. And there's a lot more options this time around where you can choose girl what to say, different choices you have to make, several outcomes. There's times when you have only a certain amount of time to pick a choice, which calls for really suspenseful moments. There's a lot of interesting characters this time around, so not only will every now and then you'll be fighting alongside with them, but you'll also want to be rescuing them and helping them out, and you really do feel like you really do want to help these people out because of how well their development and their character is. Now in terms of the game's looks, I mean, not much to say, the game looks phenomenal. I absolutely love the open world sandbox this game this time around. This is easily one of the best looking open sandbox games I have ever seen. In fact, it's right up there with Skyrim, GTA V, and many other popular franchises. The game looks absolutely gorgeous, and there's so much detail, it's insane. From the smallest things to like having the little wrinkles on Geralt's face, to just having the large city of Novigrad super detailed in all the streets and all the different looking people, it looks truly spectacular. So all in all, the graphics are outstanding. Every now and then I would see some pop-up issues and some textures were still trying to load, but really nothing that impacted my experience.
In terms of gameplay, if you play previous Witcher games before, you're going to feel a bit of deja vu as well, because it's essentially kind of the same thing in terms of combat, while using your light attacks, heavy attacks, parrying, block, using certain signs, which essentially are these magical attacks you can use in combat as well. So if you played the Witcher games before, it's pretty standard, and if you have not played the previous Witcher games, it's also pretty easy to pick up. And of course you're going to have your basic RPG elements, you're going to have your leveling up system, you're going to be able to buy different types of weapons, armor, and even things for your horse like the saddle so that it can help it run a lot longer. So many different types of things you can upgrade, which are really extensive, which I'm really glad the developers took the time to do this. That. Although with each upgrade you have to manually activate it in the skill tree, which the skill tree can be kind of confusing at first, but after playing the game for a while it becomes pretty basic, so no big deal there. A lot of the quests too really did feel they were well done. A lot of times you're not going to be stuck in the same place. Often you're going to be running from one part of the map to the other to complete a certain objective for a quest. Usually the quest will keep you in one location at a time so they don't have you running from one spot of the world to the other because I really hate when games do that. They usually have you keep in the same area like for example if you're doing a quest in the city of Novograd all the objectives are usually kept in the same place in the city of Novograd which I really would prefer. Every now and then though you are going to get a pretty lengthy quest which will require you to go to multiple regions which I really don't mind. It really does help expand the actual time of the quest. I really do like how a lot of the quests can take a lot of time to complete as well. Even secondary quests, a lot of these can take you between 15 even 30 minutes, while main quests can take you up to and over an hour. It's really awesome. You can really feel the developers went all out with it because at certain times you don't only play as a girl but you also play as Siri herself and her powers are really cool being able to sprint super quick it almost looks like she's teleporting her health regenerates super fast and when you play as her long enough she gets this upgrade ability where she basically has this large open wave and after holding down the attack button long enough after releasing it she basically does this really cool matrix style fighting moves attacking every enemy on screen that was within that ring. It's really interesting to play as multiple people, and it would also be pretty cool if Siri even gets her own game. Now that would be pretty interesting. Now the game is nearly perfect, however, there is one pretty important issue that I should probably let you guys know about. There's currently, as of today, a bug, a big game-breaking bug going on in the game, where essentially how it works is if you've been playing the game for a couple hours, and if you get killed, you'll be on the respawn screen. However, if you try to respawn, the game just loads and loads and loads, you can't press anything and you're stuck there. So essentially the only thing you can really do is restart the game. However, that does not even work either because if you try to go back into the game, it's just going to be stuck on the main menu after you hit the start button and you really can't do anything because it just loads and loads and loads forever. And this is occurring on all platforms regardless if you're for playing on PS4, Xbox One, or PC. The only way as of now to fix this is to hard reset your console or PC you're playing it on, which essentially you can either do this by going into your console's or PC's dashboard, or essentially the easiest way is just to unplug your power cord and plug it back in. The only problem with this though is that any auto saves you've had in your session are going to be lost, so you're going to be reverted back to your original manual save. So I recommend manually saving your game as often as possible. What I usually do is I manually save after each quest I do, or after I travel to a new area, I try to manually save. It is kind of a pain right now, but nothing really to hinder your experience that much, but just a heads up that that is the state the game is in currently. So overall, this game is fantastic. I could go into so many more details with this game, such as the music, the writing, the background story, etc, etc. There's so many things to discuss, but needless to say, it's all really well done. The only nitpicking issues I have with this game are the ones that I previously mentioned. But other than that, the game is really a masterpiece. I definitely recommend picking this up. I mean, even with its $60 price tag, it's definitely worth it. And on top of that, CD Projekt Red is giving out 16 completely free DLCs on top of that. So you're definitely getting your money's worth especially for all the content already packed into the game. So pick it up. I promise you will not be disappointed. It is worth every penny. So I give The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt a solid 9 out of 10. 
a must buy. Pick it up as soon as you get the money for it if you don't already. And I hope you guys will enjoy the game just as much as I did. So have you guys played The Witcher Theory of Bottle Hunt? Did you like it? Did you not like it as much as you wanted to? Let me know in the comments below. And please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always guys, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. Hey Siri, should people subscribe to my channel? Interesting question, Josh. I know, right? But the answer is, the answer is yes. The answer is yes.